okay so morning we were uh, looking at heat transfer in a vertical channel and uh, we had started looking at the energy balance we looked at the wall temperature distribution the bulk fluid temperature distribution so just a recap for those who were a little late so this is your energy balance for uh, the bulk fluid temperature Tm would come out to be Tmi plus heat flux pi dz by m dot Cp okay. Uh, wall, wall temperature distribution would come from the bulk fluid temperature distribution with addition of the heat flux term heat transfer coefficient being a constant in the fully developed region this is also going to be a constant so you would have a linear relationship for the bulk fluid uh, so the wall temperature. Wall temperature when it goes beyond saturation there is always an issue of nucleation or bubble formation happening thereby increasing the heat transfer coefficient from single phase force convection to a two phase heat transfer coefficient. So when that happens we have to take care of that a little bit in the heat transfer processes. Your bulk fluid temperature definition is this your bulk mean velocity also everybody knows how that is obtained. And we said that the first layer of fluid in contact with the uh, wall of the pipe would be having thermal no slip that is the temperature of the fluid would be the same as the temperature of the wall. The temperature of subsequent layers of fluid would be lower than temperature of the wall and if I were to uh, get bulk fluid temperature here the bulk fluid temperature would be something like this the black line is the bulk fluid temperature with respect to Z. So if you can see this part of the flow here this portion locally would be at a higher temperature than the bulk mean here basically around this portion. This portion would be below the bulk mean temperature okay. So when such a flow happens when such a situation happens so what we do is we take a look at I am drawing it horizontal but the same thing uh, would be applicable for vertical only thing that would change is the nature of flow pattern the physics would remain the same okay. So this is your fluid temperature profile at Z1 this is your fluid temperature profile at some location downstream this is two phase region already okay. So I am purposely drawing this a little exaggerated uh, as the flow happens and has heat flux is supplied through the wall whether it is constant heat flux or variable heat flux does not matter the phenomena would be similar only your heat transfer coefficient for constant heat flux case would be uh, would be constant in the fully developed region. So this bulk fluid temperature bulk mean would be this one and here you would have this as the bulk mean at Z2 and T bulk mean at Z2, Z2 greater than Z1, T bulk mean Z2 greater than T bulk mean Z1, is that right? The temperature profile is such that you would have a greater difference between the bulk mean temperature and the local temperature for a larger location in the pipe here it would be for a smaller variation it is not drawn to scale but I hope you are able to appreciate that the bulk mean shifts a little bit therefore your difference between the bulk mean and the local fluid temperature would be much smaller here. So what happens? Nucleation is a surface phenomena okay. Nucleation is a surface phenomena it needs a surface for a bubble to form. There is something called homogeneous nucleation which will happen in the bulk fluid but that will happen at very very high fluid temperature. So we do not study that aspect of nucleation in this course. We study nucleation which is basically happening because of the presence of a heated surface. So when I have a heated surface 
there are some cavities of various shapes and sizes irregular regular whatever you want on the surface we are not going into the details why how but bubbles are formed at these local spots okay not all cavities will give rise to bubbles or not all cavities will give rise to bubbles at the same time some will start by nucleation at earlier time some will start at a later time so if a bubble is formed the bubble basically will start to grow so if i were to plot the growth of a bubble with respect to time it would it would be initially like this then it would be this this way this is with increasing time okay why this grows will not worry so this will grow and after some time if if the uh, bubble is not left the surface and now you have to look at this figure and this figure in uh, succession this bubble is growing on the surface okay so the temperature each each fluid layer can be treated as a sheet okay so there is a sheet of fluid here there is a sheet of fluid at a, these are all sheets of fluid okay so this bubble is growing through the uh, fluid okay so it is passing through the liquid in contact with it so when the temperature of the sheets of fluid this is t wall t wall greater than t sat that is a necessary condition so t wall at z greater than t sat at that given system pressure that is a necessary condition when this happens and we know that t decreases as we go away from the wall that also we know so some location in the uh, in the coordinate direction let us call this as y some location in the y direction you would have a sheet of fluid which is at a temperature t sat incident it is it is going to be like that and somewhere here this would be below t sat so some layer of fluid will be at t sat some would be below t sat when this particular bubble whatever shape it is it comes in contact with a colder sheet of fluid it will have to condense it will lose its energy and condense okay so when it condenses it you will see a complete liquid there the energy that the bubble had would be given back to the fluid with increase in time okay or with increase in distance whatever you can you can look at both these simultaneously at a downstream location the bulk fluid has become hotter or with increase in time at the same location the bulk fluid has become hotter so both ways you can analyze this it's the same phenomena the layers of fluid further away from the wall would now be at t sat okay so what was a lower value here would move would be a higher value now at next time or the next location so if i take this location here and the same location here the temperature t local at this uh, x at this r sorry and the temperature t local at this r so t1 at r is less than t2 at r right or you read it with respect to time that also is fine so t1 at r comma t is less than t1 at r comma t plus delta t both are the same so at a subsequent time or at a downstream location the layer of fluid would now be at a higher temperature so this bubble will now again start to form after a certain waiting period why that waiting period we will see later so it now encounters a slightly hotter liquid surrounding it so the ambient fluid temperature is higher so there is a chance for it to grow to a larger dimension than what it was before before it collapses and probably when it grows it would grow to a size such that before it reaches before it hits the layer of fluid which is at t sat the force balance would be such that the bubble will leave the surface okay buoyancy forces inertial forces all these are going to be there the bubble will leave the surface when it leaves the surface it will start to rise when it rises it will come eventually in contact with that colder layer of fluid and then again it will collapse 
this process of growth, collapse, etc., will continue until the bubble is now going to in, going into a field which is at least at T sat. The bulk fluid everywhere is at least T sat and locally is going to be superheated. Yeah. If it goes into a colder environment, it will collapse. In, it no, it see if, if that's what it will shrink in size. And it has to collapse eventually. Yeah, if it is, uh, how? See, I have. Whose temperature increases? Why? Why will it increase? Yeah. Okay, so you are saying instant that that process of rise of the bubble and going is actually quite fast. The time scale for that is much smaller than the time scale for the fluid to, fluid to get hot. Okay. Yes. Right. Above the above t uh, above r equal to zero. Okay. Okay. Because I have shown it horizontal. Again goes to r equal to one or r equal to two or something like that, and temperature increases. Again. R equal to one or r equal to two. This is symmetric. So the temperature yep. here would be the same as temperature here. Yes. So, if if this is a this is a let me draw it again. If this is a location of P sat. Okay, this is R one. Similar location here. It is a it is a cylinder of location P sat. So, every fluid particle at this radius side view is at T sat. Okay, if the bubble comes through this, it is entering a colder environment. Yes. Yeah. Then what else? So, it's not necessary that the fluid inside is at a temperature uh, below T. Greater than equal to T side. It so, is. Uh, it will uh, basically it will come through. Yeah. One second. I, I think I am understanding what you are saying. Just let me see. So it has enough velocity that it can pass through the layer. Without ah. And go where? Uh, upwards. Up where? Upwards means? To a region. So it you are saying? It okay. starts from the lower. It starts angle. from here. Okay. So I have, I have a pipe. This is the wall of the pipe. This is the. This is the location where. Locus, of, T sat. So this is the plane where you have T sat. This bubble has grown and it has it has come here. Now what are you saying? So it has enough velocity that it can cross this region. It will cross and go here. Yes. The moment it strikes something cold, it it will continue. Because what the mechanism of bubble suspense is that the surrounding fluid. This we are going way beyond what we should be going. This has to dump in energy for this bubble to grow. Okay, the moment this goes below T sat, energy will go from here to here. Driving temperature difference is responsible for heat transfer. When the surrounding evaporation of the fluid, which is in contact with the interface, which is at the interface of this bubble, will feed into this. That is how, at time T one and at time T two, you see a change in the size of the bubble. Okay, now the, what does it mean? T surrounding is greater than uh, is, is is greater than T sat locally. Okay, so when that is happening, the bubble is trying to grow. If if it if the ambient is colder, then this temperature is greater than T sat. Yeah, so it will continue to lose energy. It will lose energy. And but you, you, you are saying it may not collapse. Enough velocity that it can cross through the T without. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. It there could be a situation we are saying that the bubble may not collapse; it may become smaller and then go further. Yes. Is that what you are trying to say? Okay, I have not thought of it that way. Probably may happen if if the bubble has the real high amount of energy. Okay. There is nothing like vanish; it will collapse. That's all. It will condense. That's what. That's what I mean saying collapse. Collapse is same as condense. It's same as vanish in local language. So normally that's what will happen. What his question is: if the bubble is 
reasonably large and this region is reasonably small yes sir if this region is reasonably small and the bubble is reasonably large this the amount of energy lost by the bubble as it travels through here may only decrease the size uh, and uh, it will continue to remain as a vapor phase that is also possible okay is almost equal to the so it would happen in like the yeah almost equal to that that is like a very you, you will not be able to distinguish even the fact that the bubble is losing energy because the bulk field is almost at the same temperature mildly lower so it would happen in a case uh, meaning when we are studying this conceptually concept what i am telling is what is normally happening what you are telling will also happen typically when the bulk fluid temperature is almost equal to psi yeah that is that is likely to happen so you might not see a collapse of the bubble you might see it decreasing in size and by the time it tries to go down the bulk fluid temperature is increased to psi that it will continue to retain its life yeah yeah qualitatively yes in z1 there is a more chance very high probability that bubbles will collapse in in this situation where the temperature locally is almost equal to psi throughout there is a likelihood that it may not collapse certain size of bubbles that okay so yeah what you are saying is right okay so now let us just go back to yeah yeah uh, so uh, the time scale of the nucleation part will it be comparable to the uh, the, the time scale of the temperature growth can we hold this question in boiling because time scale of nucleation would decrease as you proceed uh, with a larger uh, with increasing time as more and more heat is supplied the time scale for nucleation would decrease okay because the bulk fluid is so there is a transient conduction involved but there the, is but the moment of the the, the, the time scale for the movement, movement is very that is the, that is the directly related to the diameter of the bubble size of the bubble i just wanted to confirm that. yeah it is related to the size of the bubble the time scale of this would be comparable at some time to the velocity time scale for the uh, bubble uh, velocity sometimes when it becomes larger rate of bubble formation is larger compared to the removal then you get what you see as chf in your in the experiment in heat transfer that you did na so there is the rapid growth of bubble will it will be so much that it's not even able to go out in which case in which case this time scale is very very small this is the growth of the just one more question no out, just out of curiosity the growth of the t saturation the, the thing which is said on the next slide will it will it be like like this uh, will it be concentric always it is drawn qualitatively okay. it, it could be very whatever was it is symmetric by and large see i am i am showing it horizontally because convenient to draw this vertically yes it would be by and large uh, whatever we do horizontally if we do it vertically the whatever bubbles are formed here will try to go up bubble may not necessarily form at this location so which means that the local temperature see t is a function of r comma z even in single phase so t is definitely a function of r comma z in two phase because locally if a bubble is formed here this local temperature is different from this local temperature if a bubble is not formed here right so all that is Microscopic nitty gritty that we are talking about, so it may not be constant. It doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah. Small small amount of uh, impurities uh, dissolve gases. Everything is caused. So that we will study when we go to boiling. Okay. So this intention of this was not to make it so complicated. It's just that you know, since we are starting something, we will rather give it a, a in depth description. you are now in this part okay so where the bulk fluid is now not yet reach saturation but wall has come to a case where it has started to support nucleation wall temperature after that point will remain constant okay there might be a slight decrease later on in the wall temperature reason for that we will study towards the end of the course why it will decrease so right now even if you draw it as a horizontal line it is perfectly okay the drop is hardly a degree or a fraction of a degree okay 
So, delta t essentially starts to remain constant t wall minus t fat is almost constant throughout. So, in this part ok when you see here this portion is called as subcooled boiling see here this is all the fluid mechanics part flow pattern part this is the heat transfer part associated with it. So, this portion from here to here is region B which is called the subcooled nucleate boiling part ok and the flow pattern essentially is bubbly flow. So, there is no there is uh, the demarcation about of the heat transfer and the fluid mechanics part is not the same. So, here you see uh, subcooled boiling saturated boiling you have couple of flow patterns already and if you go back to your unheated channel we had bubbly flow, we had slug flow, we had what churn flow, we had wispy annular then we had annular. In this case you do not even mention any of those things bubbly slug annular directly ok. So, uh, this this graph represents the bulk fluid temperature and the liquid core temperature here is basically lower than T sat that is what is indicated by uh, this profile liquid core is lower than T sat in this point. So, your profile here shows a dashed line ok. So, that variation is captured by that. When we do bulk fluid energy balance we will draw the thick line ok. We will show a sudden change in slope at this point that is the location of Z sat which is already covered this morning. So, this point is a sudden change in slope and to draw this diagram for the wall this would be the wall temperature profile after that yeah. So, bulk fluid change of slope here wall temperature change of slope here this point onwards where the nucleation starts this point till this point is called subcooled nucleate boiling SCB ok region. Flow pattern would essentially be bubbly and would continue to be bubbly in the saturated nucleate boiling region. What is saturated nucleate boiling? When the bulk fluid temperature has reached saturation temperature. When it crosses T sat that is the point where there is a likelihood I do not know. So, this point onwards you would have ok in in there are two aspects partial subcooled nucleate boiling and fully developed subcooled nucleate boiling is there. So, this portion would be the partial subcooled boiling you do not bother about. So, this region itself is very very small when you calculate your heat transfer coefficient you will you can even ignore ok. But this region to this region is a region where there is a very good likelihood of collapse and all those things. So, you you this is where the bubbly flow can be sustained yeah. You will in in this part you will start to see in this part you will see some amount of bubbles which are going to start coming out and would be able to leave the surface and come out ok. And by the time this one has collapsed the next set of bubbles are ready to come. So, you would see a again see these are all visual observations and interpretations of a visual observation. So, you might call it intermittent bubble flow does not matter, but what what we are trying to say is there will be bubbles which are going to be formed and it is not that one bubble after that there is a 5 minute gap or something you will start seeing bubbles at regular intervals ok. So, after this when you continue along the vertical length of the channel you would see more and more bubbles which are being formed and this group of bubbles will come together and start to form what we call as the slug flow ok. Slug flow is essentially a conglomeration of the bubbles which are now going to increase in size and form larger bubbles or you form you see these kind of shapes called as a slug which are basically much more uh, disorderly in shape as compared to your adiabatic flow situation. You would have a head, you have a tail, but not not so nice as you had in case of a adiabatic flow situation. This interface always is agitated because of the heat transfer and the continuous generation of vapor. Yes, whenever bulk or wall? Just, just the fluid. Fluid temperature. If it is greater than T sat and boiling is a change of phase from liquid to vapor yes. you are asking whether it has to happen. 
if the surface conditions are such that the uh, nucleation can be sustained yes by that i mean the surface should have cavities let's say if there is some fluid element that is talking about and its temperature has gone greater than inside that is no longer fluid that is steam because that is no how did it become steam the fluid cannot exist beyond okay we will we will uh, answer this exact question at uh, on the first lecture after mid set okay the fluid can exist at a temperature greater than t sat for a very very short period of time before it changes state it's called as a metastable state it's called as a superheated liquid super saturated liquid so we'll come to that so it is a thermodynamically unstable thing therefore it will have to convert to vapor okay so hold on to these boiling related questions later on it's definitely very interesting uh, you many of these things will get answered as the lectures progress okay any other uh so the slugs are uh, what you see and once the slugs are formed further heat transfer would ri give rise to remember in your homework we had asked you to plot the void fraction profiles and you would see that with very very small change in quality the void fraction goes to 0.9 and 0.9 etc is almost certainly annular flow okay so when you do in the next homework or the third homework when you see flow pattern map annular flow is pretty much what is dominant okay so here for a small change in quality you would see a very large change in void fraction though so from a heat transfer point of view thermodynamic point of view the quality has gone up by 10% void fraction has gone up by 90% okay so you would have a flow pattern which is more or less an annular kind of flow pattern and because of this uh, fluctuating nature of the interface because of the heat transfer you would have an annular core which is not necessarily a uh, of constant thickness so i would have a core of the liquid uh, of the vapor phase typically something it will go like this liquid liquid gas and eventually downstream you will start to see this kind of why and how why what happens i am just going to make a statement take it for now towards the end second or third last lecture you will understand this nucleation would start to go down with increase in quality it's a very very important concept nucleation i'm making a statement decreases with quality increase then how does phase change happen phase change happens because of evaporation okay so quality change would lead to suppression of nucleation we will see why how that happens whether it is constant wall heat flux case or constant wall temperature case nucleation sites which were active will die will no longer be active they will be killed then heat is being supplied so what happens the there is a annular flow kind of situation heat is coming in this is t sat or greater than t sat this fluid is almost t sat or slightly higher you would have heat transfer by evaporation which is a surface phenomenon and therefore your annular liquid will start to decrease in thickness as i move along the uh, pipe so annular flow annular flow with uh, flow entrain with entrainment all this can be encompassed as one flow pattern doesn't matter so this from here on you would start to see what we call as annular flow and what is the heat transfer mechanism saturated nucleate boiling here also and somewhere here we have there is a line for end of nucleate boiling basically that means that from there on it is primarily forced convective heat transfer through the liquid film nucleation is by and large zero contribution to the heat transfer that's what i mentioned here so somewhere there what quality how much etc there are models to predict that okay nevertheless the heat transfer coefficient it is something very fundamentally nice whatever be the mechanism the two contributing mechanisms are such that the total heat transfer coefficient is the sum of these two would almost be the constant across the quality range from 0 to 1 i'm not saying it is constant it is varying a little bit but you can take a constant value and still be okay with your calculations yes sir nucleation is a mechanism of boiling 
evaporation is also a mechanism of boiling. Boiling is essentially uh, the word given for phase transformation from liquid to gas phase. Okay, evaporation and evaporation when the fluid is at TSAT is very different from evaporation when it is in a hot cup of coffee is left open to the atmosphere after two days it will go away. That is evaporation because of mass transfer uh, concentration difference. This evaporation is uh, force convection driven heat transfer which we call it. Okay, so these are the two mechanisms of heat transfer. Yeah. Because you have entrapped air in there. Yeah. That is a necessary condition. So, if I if I remove all the air and remove all dissolved gases etc okay and have a lab scale setup where I would prevent nucleation you will not have uh, you will not have you will not have any bubble formation for very very high wall superfaces. that is called homogeneous nucleation that goes because of the energy content of the fluid itself becomes very high so it will form a bubble in randomly in the middle of the liquid. Bubbles are the same chemical structure. Okay. okay. Nagendra, any question? Any question? Okay. So, once you come to this point, I can't show it here. So, once we are in the region F in the slide, which is annular flow with entrainment. Entrainment as we, as we said is where you have the liquid droplets which are taken in the flow and the thickness of the annular film of liquid will start to decrease. Somewhere here at the end of region F we will reach a point or we will reach a situation where there is no more liquid in contact with the heated surface. That is called as dry out. Dry out is the English word drying of the surface is called dry out. Now, this dry out versus what you people did in the heat transfer lab okay where you did chf with a wire and there are a lot of liquid still the wire burns off dry out there you had the the wire which was covered by a vapor film and therefore there was no uh, good heat transfer possible and the wire would burn off so heat transfer lab those of you did and you would say that is this critical heat flux so again there is a misnomer in all these Critical heat flux is that so called maximum value of heat flux. The mechanism for the destruction of the surface is basically a temperature rise, temperature excursion from a good temperature to a temperature beyond its melting point. What is the cause? Lack or lack of liquid being in contact with the heated surface. In the heat transfer lab experiment, liquid was surrounding the wire but was unable to reach it. Whereas here, physically there is no more liquid. These are completely different mechanisms of occurrence of critical heat flux. This one is called as departure from nucleate boiling, the lab scale one, where water was there but was not able to sustain nucleate boiling. It was occurring at low qualities. That was called as departure from nucleate boiling or DNB. dry out again this we will study in chf i'm just going to give you two lines of introduction here d and b departure from nucleate void this is dry out these are the mechanisms which cause poor heat transfer what is critical heat flux critical heat flux is a very uh, what is a loosely used term okay critical heat flux actually is is not even a physical process okay what happens uh, the surface has to be destroyed that is the worst possible situation the surface has to melt what causes the melt a temperature rise what causes the temperature rise a poor heat transfer mechanism what causes the poor heat transfer mechanism are these two this is occurring at x quality very high no liquid in the channel at all. You see here in the slides, it, you, you had reached the liquid film had reached the wall and it is thinned out and completely it is gone from the surface. 
So, liquid practically is there only in the form of dispersed droplets in the flow. So, this is only dispersed droplets in the flow, no liquid physically present other than these dispersed droplets. Here you would have a case where liquid is very much here, but this film is basically covering the heated surface and therefore, it is a low quality phenomena. X is high, X is low. Okay. Void fraction if you see across the pipe, across the channel radius, this void fraction is practically high, throughout it is almost constant. Okay, this I am showing this to avoid discontinuity, whereas here it is something like this, because this is liquid here, so the low void fraction is there in the center. So, void fraction behavior is different, heat transfer mechanism was also different, but what you see the end result is called actually burn out. Burn out is what is the terminology that should be used, physical burning away of the surface, destruction of the surface, the mechanism is this, mechanism is this. The heat flux at which this happens, I always keep telling this, I can have a constant value of heat flux, small value and still achieve the destruction of the surface. You keep milk for boiling, go away to the market, come back after 2 hours, the milk is gone, evaporated, the vessel is turned black and probably it loses its integrity. That also is CHF, your gas was on the same flame. Okay, does that mean that is CHF for the, uh, for this metal fluid contact? No. If the, if the uh, gas was on high flame, the milk would have evaporated in, in a lesser time and still the same process would have happened. So, physical destruction of the surface is what is important. Heat flux is in that, in this milk boiling thing, time was a factor. Okay. So, if it kept on going for a long time, you would achieve CHF in any situation for that matter. Okay, if you have fixed amount of liquid. In case of flow situation, these are the two possible mechanisms of heat transfer. No, no, this is void fraction, void, void fraction with radius, sorry, void fraction with radius. I will draw this again on CHF, we will study this in detail, do not worry. Quality is energy balance related, lot of liquid, low quality lot of vapor high quality, typically very high quality CHF, which mechanism is dry out. Okay, so, now onwards at least after hearing this introduction, do not use the word CHF loosely. Okay, it is bothersome because it is a wrong concept which is being conveyed. Destruction of the heated surface because of lag, because of poor heat transfer caused by one of these two, that is called burnout. The heat flux at which that occurs is incidentally called as the critical heat flux or the maximum heat flux. It is a very wrong statement because if time was a factor, then even a low heat flux exposed for a long time would cause destruction of the surface. Okay. So, that, that knowledge I think you should be able to appreciate. What happens to the wall temperature here? There is an excursion of the wall temperature. This is what happens in the boiling curve. Those of you who have done the, the uh, heat transfer experiment. And then there is a reduction in wall temperature. Why? Because this droplets which are there entrained in the flow would act as heat sink. So, there is evaporation of these liquid droplets which are carried by the flow. They start to become smaller in diameter. They are, they are good source, good sinks for heat transfer. So, there is a mild reduction in the uh, wall temperature because of better. Uh, I can have, correct, 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 yes, see, 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 I, I agree what you are saying, uh, I, I agree to what you are saying, see, but critical heat flux experiments when we say in a channel, we would, we are looking at that heat flux which would prevent, suppose this professor students, if anybody is here, they would be able to appreciate this. See, I have many experiments which are there to study critical heat flux in coil, helically coiled tubes, etc. What it means is, you do not want this, this is definitely not good, because this happens very early, this is unpredictable also. 
you don't want dnb to occur so that's a very very bad heat transfer mechanism because this is uncontrolled okay this happens typically i am not told this also this happens when heat flux is very high this can happen in low heat flux situation okay so if i have a pipe in which which is being heated by whatever means okay there is a fixed length l okay whatever be the length in a, in a lab scale you are doing this experiment i want to study where what is the maximum heat flux that i can sustain that means my diameter is fixed for the pipe material is fixed my mass flow rate probably is under my control which is which is variable my heat flux is variable my subcooling at inlet is variable okay so i will fix a mass flow rate fix an inlet subcooling and vary the heat flux so i will do one experiment with q double prime 1 it will probably be completely uh, good heat transfer no no location in the pipe chf if it ha has to occur would occur at the exit or just before the exit not somewhere here as long as i don't I, as long as i prevent this mechanism and if chf has to occur by dry out it will occur either at the exit or just before the exit okay so for a for a value of m dot 1 fixed i fix a delta t sub inlet fixed q double prime u vary i would get a variation of the quality as a function of uh, length etc okay this might be a case where it is a good nucleate boiling no chf has happened so this is this combination this combo is a good combination is good safe from heat transfer point of view now i keep doing this q1 q2 qn q6 let me say at this q6 which is a much higher value i start to see that at somewhere here i have reached a uh, dry out how do i know i will have wall temperature measurements or a thermal camera which will show me that wall has become suddenly hot that means for this combination of m dot 1 delta t sub 1 and q double prime 6 i get chf i get dry out let me put it that way i get dry out at exit or near exit that means for this combination and for this length for this length this heat flux is an unsafe heat flux. that is the critical heat flux for that combination of diameter length mass flow rate subcooling or in in that case we would give g as the parameter okay i will do this set of experiment keeping a different subcooling i would get a difference so i would get a matrix of subcooling and heat flux combination which is safe for a given mass flow rate repeat it for varying mass flow rate i would get a series set of information which will give me a map okay that is what most people are interested what is the safe operating condition in which i can operate this evaporator such that under normal operating conditions what does normal mean suddenly the pump is not tripped okay a parallel line draws more water therefore here water becomes less there is an earthquake so there is a flow oscillation in the flow stops power trips somewhere or somebody draws extra power so here the power is so all those unforeseen events are not going to be taken into account under normal operation will this combination give me a safe operating uh, region in the pipe okay so that is what is here so the mechanism is different and primarily this is good mechanism okay this i have control how do i have control i can do energy balance locally so there is no surprise when i have that even in this case i can have a local hot spot which may occur why because in this annular flow business suppose it goes like this this is a local hot spot okay so these are aberrations in a otherwise normal behavior that is expected yeah
see departure from nucleate boiling is if i give a heat flux which is very high very high more most likely yes it will be a high heat flux situation for a given combination suppose i go through the same experiment giving a very high heat flux i might not i might not go through this range of qualities i might not get this at all somewhere early enough i would have a uh, dnb phenomena occur so that can happen any time if the local heat flux if the heat flux given is high enough and all the bubbles formation is so rapid i don't i might have anticipated a dry out phenomena but if the if the heat flux became high for whatever reason locally then i can get a dnb there okay so well thought of uh, experiment can go wrong because of a local change in condition mass flow rate is become low then the amount of nucleation possible is not uh, is not uh, high enough there therefore you will have a problem there okay so all these are local aberration in ha huh. it is see what we are saying resistivity is important so resistivity of the wire is important so l rho la would be important so but the melting point of that wire is fixed melting point of the wire is fixed so one you were see you went on increasing the heat flux in that experiment you you varied the heat flux and there was there was a value of heat flux up to which you you were safe and then a increase in heat flux you started seeing this so you took that value of heat flux as the uh, critical heat flux. that was a cool boiling concept you were not flowing it was a fixed mass which was progressively getting it that's what i said if i continue to do the experiment for 2 3 4 5 hours nothing would the bulk fluid temperature would keep increasing okay if the 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 uh, setup was closed the mass will remain there if the setup was open the mass would have dissipated okay i i keep asking this in the viva also so if i have this setup and this is open level was here at time t equal to 0 at time t equal to t t1 it will come here t2 it will go down below the wire there there itself you have reached the the moment the liquid contact with the heated surface is gone you you turn the heater on for 5 minutes 10 minutes whatever when the wire melts that is enough for you okay what causes this vapor to form wait for the second half of the course so lot of bubbles are formed too quickly liquid is unable to come and replenish the surface therefore you have a vapor cushion very poor thermal conductivity there okay so you see a reduction in the wall temperature because of the heat transfer to the bubbles there and afterwards you have this location of quality x is equal to 1 which is given again by energy balance okay see flow pattern doesn't tell you this x is equal to 1 is a simple energy balance concept how what is the energy balance again last time i'm going to do this in the two phase region energy balance would be m dot into dh is equal to q double prime pi d dz correct if this is the channel and this is the control volume all of you should be able to do this very very easily at the end of this course this is h this is h plus dh so e dot in minus e dot out plus e dot generated equal to e dot stored assumption steady state no volumetric heat generation no changes in kinetic potential energy so on and so forth constant wall heat flux constant mass flow rate h is equal to hf plus x times hfg so dh would be equal to hfg into dx so i substitute for this here i would get m dot hfg dx by dz is equal to q double prime pi d which implies dx by dz dx by dz is equal to q double prime pi d by m dot hfg if your saturation pressure is treated as a constant everything else on the right hand side is a constant this is a constant which means x 
where is linearly with respect to z okay if it varies linearly with respect to z there will be a x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0 h is equal to hf x is equal to 1 h is equal to hg this thermo has taught me i don't have to do anything so once the enthalpy of the fluid is such that it is hg you have your quality x is equal to 1 this is bulk locally what you see is again a vapor core temperature which is going to vary because you have locally things are going to change because of the poor contact with the heated surface okay so the bulk the bulk fluid temperature whatever we call as bulk fluid temperature once there is dry out there is liquid but not in physical contact with the heated surface so the bulk fluid temperature will start to go increase the local value will increase asymptotically the bulk enthalpy concept will give you x is equal to 1 somewhere and beyond that you have what we call a single phase vapor or droplet deficient region which is again a region of very poor heat transfer okay so we are not going to study much about what is there beyond critical heat flux so we are restricting ourselves in this course to hopefully to CHF. Okay, if we are able to do CHF at least for 2-3 lectures, that itself is a big achievement. Okay. So, this diagram, this graph with these so called regimes etc, I do not want you to commit to memory, it should, it should come logically now with the help of this one hour of discussion that we have had. Okay. What is a liquid subcooled region, what is the saturated nucleate boiling region, what is the why does the bulk fluid temperature vary this way? Why does quality vary this way? Why is wall temperature constant? All these things you should be able to answer to, to a reasonable level. Why does the wall temperature increase at the time of dry out? What happens at dry out? Is it a low quality phenomena, high quality phenomena? So all these kinds of questions you should be able to answer. This part I will not cover again in uh, boiling because we have spent a lot of time here. I will flash this slide go through this discussion again, you would have a better understanding once you have studied nucleation. So, you yourself would be able to appreciate this graph a little better. Okay. Any questions? Fine. So, okay. Now, what we are left, actually we are left with three topics, two topics broadly, third one is very small. One is the choked or critical flow. and second is drift flux model. I will start with this straight away. Drift flux model is a little bit not confusing, slightly difficult to understand. We will do it in one full lecture, hopefully on Wednesday, that way we have uh, continuity. Choked or critical heat flux, uh, heat, uh, critical flow is essentially a concept which has been there in single phase. We are extending it to two phase. All of us, how many of you have studied compressible flow? Arrows, you have studied. How many? So, others have not studied. So, okay. So, let us just look at single phase. Okay. Whatever I do here is a thought experiment which, which used to be a lab setup in the old curriculum till 2009. Students would do this experiment in the in the steam power lab. There used to be a lab course 441 equivalent of that would be there where you would do this experiment. So, this is what we call as a CD nozzle, converging diverging nozzle. Okay. I am doing this for a single phase gas flow right now. We will extend this concept to two phase. Okay, once we understand what this choking business is, critical flow business is, we will extend this for two phase. This is called as pressure is called back pressure, pressure at the exit plane is called PE, this is P naught, this is the converging part, this is the diverging part, this is called as the throat. Okay. Now,
flow has to happen, there has to be a pressure difference. So, for a flow to happen m dot proportional to delta p which means I can either if p back pressure is atmospheric that means I am exiting venting to the atmosphere then inlet pressure has to be high or if inlet pressure is low uh, whatever value I can control the exit pressure to a value lower than the inlet pressure so that the flow is sustained. So, whatever be the mechanism of delta p change flow will be sustained as long as there is a delta p. So, we have we can do this experiment thought experiment with the following condition. I am going to do this thought experiment with P naught stagnation pressure fixed reducing back pressure, progressively reducing back pressure. Okay, follow me keenly, you will be able to appreciate this. So, when P naught is equal to P B, P is the local pressure at any location Z. Okay, so, I am plotting a non-dimensional quantity local pressure divided by a constant value which is the upstream stagnation pressure. So, I have a tank whose pressure is maintained constant irrespective of what is happening to the mass flow. Okay, so, I make a, make a uh, rupture in the wall mass is going to flow because of the delta P. Now, instead of that sudden change we are doing this experiment such that I have a valve and I slowly reduce the back pressure by some means and up, uh, upstream pressure is held constant. So, it is like a infinite reservoir kind of thing ok P, P naught is held constant. So, when the two pressures are the same pressure distribution inside is horizontal that is no pressure change no mass flow rate. So, if I were to plot here m dot also versus P B by P naught sorry P B by P naught and this is equal to 1. When P B by P naught equal to 1 M dot is 0 right. So, now I go to a value P B 1 which is less than P B initial value. So, I will have a small flow rate because there is a delta P. So, what will happen? In this case, we would have velocity in the converging section is going to increase. So, pressure is going to drop because of Bernoulli equation, ok. And then you would reach a minimum area which is a point of maximum velocity, which is a point of minimum pressure. In the diverging part, this will and come to this pressure, ok. So, boundary condition has to be matched the pressure has to become equal to boundary condition what has been imposed P B 1. So, this red curve is for P B 1. I do this for a slightly lower value of pressure ok these lines have been shown straight they are not necessarily straight. This is P B 2 ok. So, I will get this kind of a flow behavior this kind of a pressure distribution. So, m dot will lower value slightly lower value m dot will would have increased. So, this is for P B 1 case, this is for P B 2 case and further decrease in back pressure I would get a set of curves whose mass flow rate are all slightly higher than the previous one. I am not going through all those local curves. There will be a limiting value of P B. So, if I have a fine control I will be able to attain that wherein you will see exactly this ok. So, I have come to a pressure value just 
below the just one experiment was done at some PB, which was just before that uh, new condition which I want, and I got a curve which was looking like this. Okay. Now I do, I come to a case where I will start to see in the diverging portion the pressure is also going to decrease. Okay. So there would be a case wherein I will start to see this kind of behavior. So there would be a limiting value of the back pressure where last time this curve would have happened. So as I was reducing, I would trans, I would go from a case of a typical Bernoulli kind of behavior where area decrease, velocity increase, pressure decrease to a case where you start to see the pressure also decreasing in the diverging section. So there has to be a case, a value of pressure which is called as the limiting venturi condition, LV limiting venturi, wherein that was the last time you could have a venturi meter, venturi kind of flow. That means you had a decrease in pressure in the converging section as expected, increase in pressure in the diverging section as expected. So that pressure curve is called as a limiting venturi condition. Anything, any pressure condition. So I have to take a recourse to a fresh page. So we will sustain this simultaneously. So PB limiting venturi is the back pressure at which a venturi type flow happens for the I am writing it in a very, very simple language for the last time, meaning it is not a very scientific way to tell, but as long as you understand, that is what matters. So what happens? Velocity, if I were to plot, if, if I were to uh, write this case for Pb below P limiting venturi, all these cases in the converging section. velocity would increase in the converging section with respect to z. Velocity would decrease with respect to z. That means along the flow direction, velocity is going to change, right? How and why? Because for a simple reason, area decreases, pressure, uh, area decreases, pressure reduces because velocity increases Bernoulli type. I am not saying Bernoulli, I am saying Bernoulli type behavior. Okay, here area increases, uh, velocity decreases, pressure increases. Okay, so Mach number is defined as velocity by velocity of sound in that medium. This is V divided by under root gamma RT. Okay. Everybody with me here? Which means Mach number in this part also increases up to throat. I am now using this word throat for the first time. Mach number decreases beyond throat. Am I right? Velocity divided by speed of sound. Limiting venturi condition is that critical condition wherein Mach number becomes equal to 1 at the throat for the first time. Lower value of PB0, it kept on increasing. This value of limiting venturi is where things will start to change beyond that. That change is necessitated by a very, very important behavior that Mach number or velocity at this point for this back pressure would be equal to the velocity of sound. So that point is basically 
that is why we call it as a throat there is a change of uh, thing happening there so m is equal to 1 at the throat would happen at the limiting venturi condition i will keep writing this for the first time is very important okay now mass flow rate kept on increasing all this while so pb1 pb2 and then this is a value at pb limiting venturi i now reduce the value of back pressure further i see a curve which is going to go along this black dash line what is my value of set back pressure something which is pb4 pb3 was my limiting venturi condition some pb4 which is smaller than p limiting venturi so its magnitude is somewhere here if this air or gas went on to behave like this it would go and get a exit pressure which is non conforming to the boundary condition so what happens the information from here this in this diverging section the pressure is decreasing continuity equation rho av it's not av now density changes start becoming important so d rho by rho plus da by a plus dv by v equal to constant uh, is equal to 0 sorry is equal to the m dot is constant so if i differentiate i'll get this so density changes along with area change affect the velocity change okay so what happens this portion there is a this is subsonic all the way here that means mark number between 0 and 1 in this part beyond limiting venturi the flow here starts to become supersonic okay therefore if it were continuing to become supersonic it would go and reach an exit pressure which is non conforming to the boundary condition imposed therefore what happens somewhere something comes and tells the flow hey look don't go this way you are going down a slope you're going to meet a dead end you are not going to conform to the boundary condition so that some message which comes gives it a shock i wake you up tonight and say tomorrow you have a mid sem watch 50% of your grade that's a shock so that same thing happens to the flow it has to adjust itself suddenly to be able to go and attain this boundary condition that sudden change is what we call as a normal shock why is it normal normal there is nothing like an abnormal shock normal is orthogonal to the flow direction okay so you would see a normal shock which is going to happen this normal shock is necessary for the flow to correct itself from going into a supersonic high speed flow to a flow which will attain its boundary condition which was set by me as pb4 okay we will continue this discussion on this normal shock and what happens and then take over for the uh, two phase flow on wednesday